back to Free Media. I'm Bhatia Unger Sargon. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, MSNBC's Joy Reid is terrified that Donald Trump already has plans to implement a fascist takeover if he returns to the presidency. Here's how she described the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025. If you read even just chapter 18, which is the chapter that says we're going to get rid of Department of Education, we essentially we don't like Pell Grants, uh, and we hate anything that's called diversity, equity, and inclusion, <laughs> is a frontal attack on every civil right we have won through the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that we're celebrating its 60th anniversary. And even the president of the Heritage Foundation wanted to celebrate the Civil Rights Act of 1964 at the same time that he is standing proudly on a document that says we are going to take it all away because we think it hurts white people. Trump, however, has distanced himself from Project 2025. Let's take a look at that. Project 2025 is a chilling vision of a far-right authoritarian government filled with radicals and Trump loyalists, and it is obviously deeply toxic to most normal voters, which is why Trump is now shamelessly pretending he has no idea what it is. Donald Trump is officially trying to distance himself from Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation's far-right blueprint for a possible second Trump term. Trump wrote, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who's behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. Man, you almost made it, and then and right at the end, you had to go and wish them luck. You know, I'm fully prepared to believe this is a uh, handbook for a fascist takeover, uh, I guess. Um, there are certainly policy areas where I disagree uh, with Heritage, including on uh, immigration. Um, but then in, on, on Joy Reid's show, they started reading all the parts of Project 2025 that I agree with. Um, I would absolutely like to eliminate the education department. Um, the education department has only existed for, I think, like 40 years. Actually, I interviewed the previous education secretary, the Trump's secretary, Betsy, Betsy DeVos. DeVos for Reason Magazine, where she said she didn't right. think the building needed to exist. <laughs> it's just the federal bureaucracy that administers the funds. Um, it does so inefficiently. Um, if you look at a graph of of money spent on education over time at the federal level, you know, we, we spent more and more and more. Have we improved math scores? No. Have we improved reading scores? No. Um, if throwing more money, if having a more massive federal bureaucracy was the answer to education, we would have really well-educated people by now. <laughs> we would see some some growth, some some progression. So um, that, and then the the idea that you that you you are racist if you oppose DEI. Well, but, but well, there are plenty of people of color and all sorts of races and creeds who also think that DEI is patronizing and, and can be bad. I mean, having diversity can be fine. We should strive for diversity, including actually diversity of ideas and thoughts and backgrounds. But just having, uh, you know, it, again, it depends what we're talking about. These are not specific terms. But if that means looking a little bit skeptically at sort of like implicit bias seminars that studies after study have shown do no good, if not backfiring, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm OK with that. I love the kind of sneering like, ha ha, Donald Trump is trying to convince us he doesn't like this, when he's literally like every day explaining all of the ways in which he does not agree with the Heritage Foundation, <laughs> including in this, um, the GOP platform of so 2024. His, that's his actual platform. His that's actual platform, yeah. yes, um, Make America Great Again, in which he's very clear about what his ideas are. And if these people would spend five minutes just listening to a Trump speech, they would know that he differs from Heritage on many things. Yeah. Um, for starters, the Project 2025 wanted to get rid of the FDA approval for the abortion bill. Abortion appears nowhere in the 2024 mm. GOP platform. For the first time, there is no mention of being pro-life, which is 100% due to Trump's sensitivity on the issue and his understanding of where the American people are on this. But let me read you some of these, um, um, some of the, the agenda items here, all of them in full caps, as yeah, you know, actually. just in case you've doubted whether Trump had a hand in this. Remember the forgotten man. <laughs> that better be in there. We're going to do that. We're going to check that off. Um, seal the border and stop the migrant invasion. 
and popular with 78% of Americans, tell, call us a top concern. Carry out the largest deportation operation in, in American history. 63% of Hispanics support this. End inflation and make America affordable again. How could anybody oppose that? Make America That's the good. dominant energy producer in the world by far. Who could oppose that? Sure. Prevent World War III. Who could oppose that? Yeah. Oh, so you're pro World War III? <laughs> Enjoy your hate. Yeah. Fight for and protect Social Security and Medicare with no cuts, uh, including no changes to retirement age. You may not like that, yeah. but Heritage also sure doesn't like that, right? right. Um, and then unite our country by bringing it to new and record levels of success. And the point I want to make is that all of these, in and leaving abortion off of this, but I mean, Trump's view has been leave it to the states with ex exceptions for mother's health, rape, and incest. These are all issues that have, you know, two thirds support among the American people. A lot of Democrats support the majority of this platform. And this is what makes it different from Pro Project 2025 and from the caricature of it. But also, this is why they have to caricature Trump as an extremist, because when you look at the actual policy agenda, this is stuff no reasonable American could disagree with, because effectively he is running as a centrist. And if there wasn't so much opposition to him, he would be seen as a consensus candidate. Well, I mean, I think I can, as I think myself a reasonable American, <laughs> maybe not on some issues. Uh, having, uh, like, deporting the entire, all millions of illegal immigrants in this country, I, I just, I don't think it's at all feasible, or I don't, maybe you, if you poll It has two-thirds support, so you, you may Americans, oppose it, but it's well, very, very popular. But then let's start to, like, tell, are they being told this would cost trillions of dollars to do, this would involve massive disruptions to our day-to-day -day lives, that this would involve creating a new surveillance and the Patriot Act times 10, do you want to be disrupted in this way? Which is nice, I agree with you on having more border security, having a more, or I think the, the flooding across the border that is happening because of the chaos is clearly unpopular and there's a mandate to do something about it. I, I don't think, my, my sense is, most Americans want immigrants to come in legally and be able to work here, and they don't want to, and, and they, they don't like illegal immigration, they're against illegal immigration, that's fine. I think it's fine to be against illegal immigration. I don't know if at the end of the day they would really want the level, of the, the, the muscular police and national security resource, trillions of their dollars being spent for a mass deportation plan. We I'm are skeptical. right now spending billions of dollars feeding and housing yeah. 10 million illegal immigrants who crossed well, over the last Well, they're probably against doing that. I, I mean, I'm against charity for people. Sure, oh, you mean just but... kick them out and let them roam the streets? I mean... Well, I, I'm against spending on all of the, you know, I, w I would make it, and actually you agree with this because I read your book. We need more housing in this country. We need to deregulate um, uh, de the uh, specific uh, zoning regulations to make it so difficult to build housing, and then we could have more cheap housing, and then we want, I don't want to pay for it ourselves. But can I get you to admit that two-thirds of Americans support the, you may disagree with yeah. this. I don't know that. I mean, be, if you have a, a study that shows yeah, that, you I mean, might be so right. The polling I, do shows there's a lot of support mass deportations. Yeah, something like that. I think they. I think I'm sure two thirds are would say they're against more illegal immigration. Um, they're, they're they want to secure the border. They want, but just wanting to do these things doesn't necessarily mean the government is capable of doing it. Like I said, with the education department, a, ma a new massive federal bureaucracy has had zero zero improvement in reading and math scores. So I, I have, even if the people want to do it, and even it would be an ideal thing to do it, um, I just don't, I don't have a fa faith a lot of times in, they'll say, okay, we'll have another government agency and we'll allocate it this massive amount of money. Right. And then w what happens? Has the problem gotten any better? One other aspect of Project 2025 though I did want to talk about is the whole, um, kind of political retribution. That's the, been the popular narrative about it, that it's about weeding out government employees who don't want to implement a Trump agenda or a conservative agenda. And on that front, I'm like, look, I, you know, d depending on how far that goes, I would certainly be against it. I don't think like, you know, every person with pink hair or something works for the government should be fired because they presumably didn't vote for Donald Trump. I don't think Americans would want that either. But it's reasonable to me to think that whether it's Trump or Biden, the person elected, they come in, they should have leeway broadly to implement the policy agenda that got voted in. And the idea that there's like a permanent bureaucratic class that is um, carrying out the same government policies, which are inevitably culturally progressive policies, regardless of who wins in the dem democratically accountable aspect, the election, um, seems actually not good to me and is almost like 
that would almost kind of be fascism in some way if you can't like right. vote out the pe the people actually doing the policies are entrenched and there's nothing you can do about it because the people elected can have no control over them. That seems totally backward to me. And moreover, someone who I'm sure you admire very much, who I have come to admire very much, one Mr. Millet, yes. has managed to cut inflation by double digits simply by slashing government employees and government spending. And so who could be opposed to something like that when you have the evidence that this is something that would help so many people who are struggling? Yeah. Joy Reid, that's who could be opposed <laughs> to it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bacha. We really appreciated it. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, and there'll be more free media next week.